Hello and welcome back to the Rowan Consulting Shed Talk series. We're very happy to be back after our uh, summer hiatus, I think it would be, um, would be fair to say. Um, so welcome back to series two. Uh, this is a new series which will be planned, it will, is planned to take us over the next six months. Um, and we have lots of exciting stuff which is coming up. Uh, so just a reminder um, that our Shed Talks and webinars uh, cover a series of subjects that are uh, here to um, help a, uh, equip and inform, I think would be fair to say, business owners and leaders in terms of helpful advice around uh, managing teams and individuals. Uh, so like I said, we have got uh, we have got quite a full series over the next sort of six months. We're doing we're back to doing sort of one a month, um, which I'm very excited about. And I'm very excited to be able to share the programme with you over the next couple of months. Um, I think most of these will be especially relevant around the current climate as we continue to see regional lockdowns and ongoing challenges as we grapple to manage sort of the new normal. Um, so these are designed to help with those uh, challenges that we are um, that we are about to sort of go through. So uh, yeah, let's dive in. Um, feel free to sort of add any comments. Um, for those of you who are listening to this via our uh, the MP3 uh, podcast um, option, um, the script and the slides will be available to you as we go through. Um, so uh, yeah, if you can see us excellent hello and welcome um, if you can't see us no worries we will put sort of the script details and everything in the um in the notes in the show notes when we finished so like i said dive in feel free to comment ask questions we have had quite a few questions in um which we'll aim to answer as part of this uh, as part of this session if we don't get to your question in time, um, then please, please don't panic. We will come back to you and we will answer your, uh, answer your questions. Um, so be sure to message us your questions as we go through. Uh, you can do that sort of via the comments chat box, which I think is open. It is open. Um, or email us at the usual contact, which is hello at rowanhr.com, where we'll be very happy to help you. Uh, any technical issues, then let us know. So hopefully everyone can hear us okay. Uh, and I think we are probably good to go. Um, so today's subject is uh, creating dream teams, um, which is a sort of a fantasy football for business leaders. Um, and as part of our uh, leading through change and organizational growth, um, this is. Um, the roadmap really in terms of um, going through sort of that program, our six stage program that we have at Rowan Consulting, which some of you are already on and others will be uh, hopefully sort of joining us soon. For those who aren't and are interested in uh, our leader development program, which I said is, like, is a roadmap, six stage roadmap um, to uh, adapting and high performing teams, you are welcome to contact us via our current route. So let's introduce our current speaker for today or let's introduce our current speaker for today uh bear with me michael i am coming for you uh let me just bring michael into the room i'm coming for you michael hold on we're joining we're joining yay the technology works hold on one second i need to unmute you because okay. i didn't do that last time. okay you're, you're in the shed. Welcome to the shed. Thank you. Hello. You have a particularly different looking shed to I do, which is yours is particularly nice. I'm going to ask you to do the halo thing in a minute because it just oh. makes me laugh. <laughs> so let me introduce you to our speaker for today, uh, which is Michael Jones, who is a talent optimizer, management consultant, um, coach and passionate advocate of the predictive index. Um, you're going to need to explain the connection with the predictive index, predicting advantage. Okay, so I'm going to leave that one to um, to you. Um, so some of you may know Michael. I think some of you do already know Michael because uh, we have worked with him before, and I know you use the PI system, um, and you know the tool, and you know that we, you know, we use it in terms of sort of leadership development. Um, so, Michael, give us an introduction. See who you are, how it's all linked, and how it all collectively comes together. 
Okay, thank you. Well, yes, as you say, Karen, thanks. I am Michael Jones, and I uh, am a big fan. Well, it has to be because I earn my living by it, but of the predictive um, <laughs> index. Uh, I came across it more than 20 years ago now when I was uh, recruited into an organization that used it and being deeply cynical and skeptical about most things when I was presented with this flimsy bit of paper. I remember thinking, oh, really? Um, can't quite believe that I'm doing this for a living. And I've said you were insane if you told me I would be 20 years ago. Um, but um, as you know, and perhaps um, some of your uh, listeners might not know, it's a really very simple uh, behavioral assessment. It's not something that measures personality, because I think it would be impossible for any measurement of um, people to measure personality, because we're all massively complex, you know, a product of that which we we're born with, as well as the way we were upbrought and parented and our education and our religion and our values and all of those things really simple way of just understanding what drives and motivates us so um yes i came across it it's kind of changed my world really um don't know how i ever lived my life without it and for 13 years now i've worked with an organization called um, predictive advantage who are the european licensee of the predictive index which is um, very much a global um product now represented um, in every country in the world. And uh, historically, we've been the main providers of it now within the UK. And, and, and that's quite simply what we do. Excellent. Well, like I said, welcome to welcome to the shed and welcome to uh, to our series of um, our series of shed, shed talks and podcasts. Um, which um, yeah, which will sort of span over over sort of six months. So uh, yeah, you're number one on the um, number one on the list. So that's always a. Uh, it's always. I bet you say that to all your attendees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you are. You are. You're, you're number one of. You're number one of six. So we always start with the best. You're on this list. Either that, or we say the best or last. I don't know. Whichever way we look at it. Um, okay, so I think um, let's sort of kick off the conversation then. I think it would be fair to say that. Um, collectively we're experiencing a new level of sort of challenges in terms of managing teams and yeah. dealing with sort of you know individuals um, that I think I have you know I don't think I have seen this in my 20 year career either um, you know to, to quite such an extent in terms of you know absence distance engagement disengagement re-engagement general fatigue motivation changes in behaviors you know there's an awful lot I think as, as sort of coaches I think we've probably seen a couple come and go at different times but I don't think we've ever seen the amount of of, of all of those collectively in one go um, I think it would be fair to say which is a you know a, a minefield for for any business owner or leader I think right now it would be it would be pretty fair to say so yeah. I'm interested to see what's your current take then on the on the market at the moment. What's happening from from your side and what are you seeing? Thank you. I mean, I think obviously when for all of us when this hits, you know, whenever it was like hundreds of years ago now, was it February, March? Um, you know, we like everybody thought, well, that's it. You know, we're not going to be working much for the forthcoming months, are we? Um, and pretty much anticipated because we run an annual fee model, so our clients sign up to work with us. Um, we thought, well, you know, people often people use it in recruitment. So I thought, well, that's clearly not going to be happening. Although we had some wonderful new products that we were going to be out there and selling. Thought, well, we clearly can't be out there, you know, selling anything new when people are just trying to batten down the hatches and find a new way of working. So we thought, you know, our business was going to just literally turn off. And we've actually found, if anything, it's been other, it's not been the case because one of the big things that we've found particularly is that people are just even more interested in the people that they've got for all sorts of different reasons and mm -hmm. I think we took the strategic view for a few weeks when this first hit is that nobody's going to want to speak to us you know they've they're just working out how they can get people connected how they can pay people so we very much have your post-it notes just my post -it, yeah I was gonna say it's usually like my post -it. classically my post-it notes right? you can always guarantee that a book will fall over or a post-it note will fall off we could have we could have got over that one Anyway. So we, so we very much found that people came back almost kind of re-energized in terms of wanting to talk about people because of course they're hiring uh, virtually they're hiring virtually to a team that operates virtually which has you know immense complications and 
you know, clients have said to me that, you know, we've always been interested in our people, but now we're really super interested in them. So yeah. we've found a huge appetite um, from our client organizations to focus on the whole issue of teams um, because um, it's always been part of what we do. And for some clients, of course, they've seen the value in looking at aggregated profiles in terms of how a collective group of people can work together. But um, in kind of getting people difficult getting people to commit time to mm. spending time together at this thing and we found that there's been a huge appetite now um for actually making that happen people have been a lot more available um so despite that initial um i suppose tailoring off of activity we've actually ramped up quite considerably mm. and i think you know the the types of challenges that you know that we have from a client perspective is is trying to like you said the the whole idea around the sort of dispersed teams, I think people very easily went into this type of situation, didn't they, at the very beginning where they were mm. talking, you know, a lot more to their team. Oh, hugely so. And I think that's um, that's so many clients that, and, and what I've been fortunate to be able to do is the Predictive Index put together a series of what we call resilience workshops, predominantly two kinds. One focused on leadership teams that have to drive strategy and other workshops that are about teams that need to work together with, objectives but not necessarily strategic objectives so I've been kind of running these um, workshops for my existing clients throughout the summer and it's something we've been doing as a, a com complementary addition to kind of help really but um, generally speaking again there's been you know a big appetite um, for, for doing that as well you know people have been connected they've been ready to talk but you know the challenge has been is that um, you know people have individual motivation needs and drives and I found the whole thing very fascinating because I always start a conversation with well how's lockdown been for you and because I'm weirdly able to remember behavioral patterns I play a little game with myself where I try and predict how they're going to respond <laughs> and it's been really interesting how accurate that's been you know for some of us you know lockdown Karen you know put your hand up here but for some of us lockdown hasn't been a challenge because you know, we get time on our own, we get to reflect, we get to think, we get to analyze without spending lots of time in social interaction. Mm -hmm. Whereas for other people, it's been a lot more, a lot more complex. And, and I think, you know, we produced fairly early on for our clients, um, a guide to remote working based on behavioral orientation, which I think has been quite useful. But, um, you know, generally speaking, um, people, and, and I, one of the things I found is that people have time in a way that they haven't had time. I've got to speak to people who have been too busy to speak to me for all sorts of understandable business reasons for years. But I don't know, people are just there. They've not been taking holidays. They've been sitting in front of their screen. Mm. And, you know, okay, you might only get them for 30 minutes or something because their next Zoom call is stacking up. But people have just been readily available to talk about this and to find time in their diary and in each other's diaries to look at how they work together. Yeah, the appreciation from our side the appreciation of how my teams work so one of the biggest challenges that we face from from Roman's perspective is is we aim to answer the question for our clients of they will they will start a conversation of oh why can't they just oh, okay. or why won't they just mm -hmm. and I think you know with our experience in terms of from a from a PI perspective you know it is a fantastic tool like you said that identifies you know, those motivations and those behaviours of those individuals. And I think pre-February, March, I think, you know, those of us who have used PI, I know, I know when I'm using it from a, from a, you know, from a, a client perspective, there has always been an understanding when we're all collectively in an office that we might not work together or we might not work the same. I think what the COVID has taught us is there is never more now, never Anyway, you know what I mean. There is never, never a stronger need now than to understand how I work and how other people work mm. because I'm not in a room with them and I cannot read them, I cannot see them. Yeah. And therefore, you know, that understanding, you know, there's an appreciation of a better understanding. Talking to one of the clients who does use um, PI um, and what she was saying was, you know, trying to, to, to pick up on people's stuff from a dispersed team perspective when we're in this type of situation is incredibly difficult and mm. is something that she really struggles with and I think mm. that's the value of where PI comes and in. And I, I think a, a lot of my clients have said you know do you know it's weird and it's and I don't like to say it but actually as a team we feel in better shape 
in terms of understanding each other and in working with each other because we've had to or we've committed to to make an effort so you know my land manager has regularly been doing one-to-one -one updates with me and they were kind of sketchy at best in the past you know or we make time for morning huddles or once a week catch-ups but i think um that's certainly been a common message that's been coming through throughout the summer i think probably the message that's coming now is you know we're getting a bit fed up with it now um so i don't know what it's going to look like going forward um and i do feel there's there's a sense of change in the air as we start to move back to something like what it used to be um but I think, you know, and so many uh, organizations have said, you know, kind of, I don't think we can keep that level of conscious um, focus on each other going, but we need to move something that doesn't lose all that great work that we did. So, um, yeah. Yeah. And it, yeah, again, you know, our, 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 our pre-shed talk talk uh, was around, you know, how do we link that? How do we link the, the people aspect to now the strategy aspect mm -hmm. because like i said we've had a, a load of time to be peopley and now we're all getting you know yeah and so it's been interesting these workshops have focused because again when we start looking at teams you know i think again it's for anybody who knows predictive index and you ask me about a profile of a person and to give me a view i'll always say well, i had no idea have I? because you know everybody has strengths every person in the world has natural behavioral orientation which is a strength in the right environment and for us, of course, it's always when we look at the profile of an individual, we do so within the context of the role that in the organization they're going to be inhabiting. That's the only time we can be judgmental. I think the same thing very much applies to teams. You know, when people say, you know, what about this team? And I go, what are they there to do? So I think um, an awful lot of our work through the summer in the Resilience Workshop has been helping teams to be quite clear about not just who they are, but the work that they're there to do. Because... Interestingly, of course, teams, particularly leadership teams, are often constructed around a strategy. So that strategy may be rapid growth, acquisition, risk, grow, do it quickly. Well, you'd not to have a natural behavioral orientation to be really comfortable on board with that type of strategy. So you are hired to a role as part of a team that was gonna deliver that strategy. Coronavirus hits, of course, then suddenly, and I think that was the case in the predictive index business as well. We, we, we've stopped. We can't follow that strategy anymore. It's not appropriate. Market conditions don't apply. So we have to pivot strategy. Sorry, I had a client that said I was doing really well last week until I used the word pivot. <laughs> yeah. He said, I'm sick of it. It's like new normal. I have to really be careful not to use that word as well. <laughs> but the strategy, the orientation of where we're going changes. So instead of being an, a growth strategy, we're now in a retention strategy, uh -huh. which is valid and true and necessary. But what if I was a team of people that were excited about that strategy and now I've got to do this? It might not have the same appeal for me. Now, that doesn't mean it's good or bad or right or wrong, but that surely as a team is something that we should face directly so that we can now do something about that. So I think it's always really important that when we look at teams, we do so within the context of the work that they're there to do. And this is where the, the latest development from the predictive index, which is about to be relaunched, is very much about um, understanding you as a leader. I think that's a key first step. As mm -hmm. an individual, if you're somebody that leads a team, it's really important that you understand your own drives, your own motivations, and more to the point, the effect that your behavior has on other people. I think. That's the beginning of self-awareness. Um, it's also then really important that you understand where the individuals on your team are coming from. So a one-on-one -on -one relationship. And with the predictive index, you can also understand where they're coming from. So you're well on the way, I think, now to, to insight and self-awareness. And then, of course, you and the team of people working together is kind of step three, if you like. So um, let's look at their aggregated profile. What type of team are they? And we've identified nine different types of teams. So if we know what sort of team you are, we know your strengths in the normal conditions. We know your behavior when you are operating from a period of stress or crisis or change or challenge. And then of course, the fourth thing is what is the work that the team is there to do? So I think if you follow these four steps, you're well on the way to establishing a really effective um, 
high performing team. Mm. Okay, so let's let's talk about those then, because this is this is a this is a current you know a, a, a very current very real challenge. So when we talk about um, in terms of sort of our, our you know where we are right now, uh, the webinar that was that was done last week in terms of sort of engaging and motivating teams talked about we talk about it in terms of in times of that crisis or or the need for for growth and adaptation. We talk about reset, regroup. Um, and rebuild and you know the the one thing that came from that is that that people are in various different stages of that so the the reset one um, we still have a number of, of retail customer service clients who are still very much in a in a reset perspective because of the sheer amount of change that they're going through most clients I think as a result of, of the webinar were you know were identifying we're, we're in the regroup situation um, and a couple of them were moving in terms of construction and manufacturing were moving much towards that rebuild and what does yeah. that look like yeah. so you talked about there's the the first sort of the first two of those let's talk about those in a little bit more detail you talked about understanding the leader and the role of the leader, because this is really great for from our side. So the role of the leader, understanding themselves. Yep. Talk me through that bit then about how, you know, what is it they get from, from this that will allow them to be able to understand it? Okay, well, there's kind of basics really, I suppose, in terms of the predictive index, in terms of understanding your own natural behavior, behavioral drive. So, you know, understanding, for example, your attitude to things like risk and uh, excitement understanding you know the speed with which you want to get things done you know your natural strategic orientation where does it come from what type of strategy are you most comfortable following so very much understanding this is who i am and as a consequence of being who you are you will come across in a certain way to other people so it's incredibly useful to understand the effect that your behavior can have on other people um, so I think it, it, it just comes to, back to those basics, that simple understanding of I am who I am, I'm going to behave in a certain way. And of course, you know, I'll do my very best sometimes to moderate that behavior or to adapt that behavior. But the reality is, is under pressure, we all snap back to who we are naturally. So let's understand who we are. Let's look after who we are. Um, and let's play to the strengths of who we are. And let's not try to be something that we're not. Let's embrace yeah. it. And I think that's the first step. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, those who have those who have done the, the, the profiles with us have, have, you know, come away with with, um, you know, I always say to individuals, I'm, I'm probably not going to tell you anything that you don't already know. You're going to know most of what I tell you, but it will it will give you it just reminds you and it just gives you, you know, that when I am adapting to sort of something, why I react in the way that I do. That's the most insightful thing that I think from clients get from the sort of PI, you know, the PI tool. Yeah. Um, so from a leader perspective, then it will help them understand their motivations uh, and their drivers in terms of, you know. It, it's interesting, time. Karen, earlier on, you said, you know, sometimes we look at people and talk about people and we say, can't they just, why the hell can't they just? Yeah. Well, the reality is, you know, if you're a certain type of individual, you have a need to take charge, take control, use your initiative and make things happen. So you don't wait to be told. You don't like to be told. <laughs> Whereas there are other individuals who are very, very comfortable for you telling them what you want them to do, when you want them to do it and how you want them to do it. And the reality is, if you're heard saying, why can't they just? The reality is, potentially, you are not managing that person in the way that they need to be managed you're managing them like you like to be managed and actually the reason that they haven't just is because you didn't tell them what yeah. you wanted them to do so yeah. it's so wonderful to be able to understand that dynamic and cut all that nonsense out mm. okay so that's the that's the leader perspective then then you talked about sort of the the individual uh, which i guess you sort of slightly touched on in terms of if i know who i am and I have an appreciation that people don't work or see things or react to things in the same way that I do. Um, what's the benefit then in terms of for those who don't know, who don't know the huge value of PI, what's the benefit in terms of that, that sort of collective collaborated bit and what will they get? I should point out Karen, other uh, behavioral tools are available too. <laughs> 
<laughs> but you know, they're not all as good as PI. But we <laughs> we use them. We know what they're like, and we know the simplicity of PI. And I often say this to clients: the simplicity of PI and the legs that it has. You know, sometimes the spouse. But yes, for those of you out there, there are other PI tools, or there are <laughs> there are other tools available. But the reality is, if you're a leader of people, you know, you are going to be managing people that are very different to you. And you will need to because they'll be doing different jobs that call for those behavioral strengths. So if we understand what their needs are, what their drives are, what their motivations are, and we've matched them to the job and you've hired them because that's what they do and they do it well. Well, if you're going to have an effective relationship with them and manage them, and they're going to have a similar one with you, there's a reciprocal need, I think, to understand where we're each coming from. But if you, as a leader, I think you have the ultimate responsibility to manage the relationship. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you know you are somebody who's fairly quiet and private and introspective and analytical and doesn't have a need to talk, yet you have a subordinate or a member of your team who does, then you, I think, have to adapt your behavior. So you need to schedule you know, reg regular opportunities for that person to talk. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, this is why it's important to understand the individuals because they'll all be different you know and again you've heard me say this a million times before karen but you know good management has us believe we should manage other people like we expect to be managed and i said well you know it's nonsense we should manage them according to their needs not mm. ours okay so let's that's sort of the the sort of people side of of you know of, of where we are um let's Karen probably say jumping in there's probably one bit isn't it then there's the manager with the whole team so we've looked at the manager the manager and the individuals and then there's the manager with the whole team because yeah. i think you know when you are working with the tool like predictive index and we aggregate the individual behavioral drives of the individuals on your team it will give us a really really in clear insight in how that team of people is going to act and react and together um yes. so um you know i can feed back to a team based on some dots and squiggles really which is you know what we end up with and say here are your probable strengths and here are your probable challenges of working together and that's a really good place now to get the team to a place where they are receptive to doing something about capitalizing on those strengths mm. and trying what they can do to make those challenges go away I think that's the kind of third step, so I need to interrupt. <laughs> which, no, 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 which leads me very nicely onto, onto the next question that we were talking about. So the, some of the questions that, that came in is, or some of the frustrations I think that people are facing at the moment are around, we did an awful lot of people stuff and, and we're getting quite good at that now, better than perhaps we have done as a result of the, of the COVID situation. So I think there are, uh, individuals and leaders out there who who are um, ha have done the people bit and they've got quite good at it or they've got better at it or they have a better understanding of it but whatever you know for whatever reason I think where we are now is the strategy and the direction of the business is the next key thing so we had time to build teams and do all the things that we wanted to do in terms of a you know perhaps sort of like a better engagement strategy um, earlier on and now I think the foot is firmly back on the accelerator from a lot of business owners that we see absolutely. that now absolutely have to drive their business forward okay. so what we've seen is is they've gone from you know uh, understanding a little bit and now we're doing lots of people stuff and oh holy hell we have to now let's hit the accelerator because we have to get things kick-started again mm. so uh the strategy piece um uh, maybe we were talking to a client a couple of weeks ago and, and I said to them, you know, are, are we looking at, you know, you, you had a five year strategy and we were two years into that five year strategy. Um, and now, how, you know, have you done the exercise where you've gone back and had a look and gone, right, you know, where are we adding value to our clients? And, oh, actually, we think we need to change some of the strategy stuff and yeah. we're going to need to reset the destination again. Yeah. Um, so I think what's what is it the forefront of a lot of people's minds at the moment is people stuff got a bit of a better handle on that strategy let's talk now about how do I how do I sort of not stop doing this but start doing more of the strategy stuff and how can I link those two together mm -hmm. so what's your thoughts on those in terms of how you can bring people from you know people into the strategy and, and how you can you know what you can recommend to leaders for that? yeah I mean that's, that's a good point I think it's something that certainly 
I've heard from my clients. And I was running a workshop um, probably about two months ago um, with a client overseas. And of course, what we have is a, we have a strategy survey, which is able to check the alignment of the individual members of the team with the strategy that we believe that we're currently following. And what came out of that particular exercise was a clear focus on people. And they weren't a pe naturally people orientated team. You know, people were not top of their agenda. And, uh, you know, nobody was disputing it, but there was one voice of, you know, I suppose reason one could argue from a senior member of the team who said, wait a minute, we're really getting caught up in all this people stuff, aren't we? And it's right, he says, but if we don't have a business, then we can be as nice as we like to people, but we won't be able to give them a job and pay their salary. So I think, and he said, you know, and again, and a lot of people go, oh, you're so right, you're so right. So we need to make sure that we balance the interaction of people, the difficulties in managing people remotely, with while well, still keeping a focus, I think, on where are we going? And of course, where are we going may have changed, but we do need to be clear about where we're going. And we need to be telling people where we are going, because you know, this for us is very much part of being a talent optimized company about having a clear strategic direction. Because if you don't have a clear strategic direction, you can't organize yourself. You can't um, construct yourself organizationally. You know, you, it might have an impact on culture. So suddenly culture may be changing. So really clear to start with that, you know, end goal in mind. And as part of a, um, uh, some workshops that we can offer, we can help senior leaders um, be quite clear about the type of strategy that they're following. Now, it's not for us to get involved in the individual strategy of an organization. That's not what we're here to do. But our science team have worked really um, for about 18 months quite hard to identify what is strategy what is it because strategy means different things to different people um, so we've identified four big buckets if you like of, of strategic intent and they typically are you know simplistically you know exploring strategies which is all about growth acquisition risk get there quickly mm -hmm. producing strategies which are about growth but in a much more controlled um, disciplined measured fashion with a focus on retention and KPIs, or it might be what we call a, um, a stabilizing strategy. When we do what we do, we do it well, and we carry on doing it. And if growth happens, it will be small and it will be driven by efficiency. Or we have what we call cultivating strategies, which essentially are about people, empowerment, engagement, and uh, these types of things. So interesting to know what type of strategy you're going to follow of those four. And it may be a combination of two. It's unlikely to be more than two. Mm -hmm. We can then look at the behavioral orientation of a team within the context of the strategy. And we can overlay one against the other. And we can see how behaviorally orientated that team is to do the work that it's there to do. And if it's not, then that's not a problem because now we can do something about it because it's there, it's open. We can have a conversation around, okay, we might not be the people that are going to deliver that strategy, but we've got people who will be. So who do we empower? Who do we involve? Who do we delegate to? So our model is data to insights to action. So the data is capturing the PI and strategy insights in the first place. The mm -hmm. insights and our job then is to help our clients move to action on this stuff. And I think that was almost like a time's up bell then. <laughs> but, you know, even from that perspective, I think there is, um, there is a feeling when you talk strategy, that strategy has to be a big document that has to be overly, yeah. you know, that has to be written down and has to be communicated. And, and I think it does. But I think, you know, by just, just, those, just those four words, so exploring, producing, stabilizing, or cultivating strategy is, is a good conversation to have because people okay. don't want to have to rewrite huge strategy documents in a time when, like you said, we're adapting and we're changing and we're pivoting. You know, that's not what people want to do. So I think by having a, it, it's in the nicest way, it's what, you know, PI is, isn't it? There's a, there's a quite a simplistic view in terms of how this yeah. works. It's not overcomplicating it. It doesn't take it and go, oh, it's going to take you hours and hours to do. It's like, actually it won't. It's 
really. Uh, I think I told you this story some time ago, Karen, you know, our CEO of Predictive Index, you know, on, on a WebEx fairly early on into the pandemic, he, he came online and said, guys, we need to stop trying to be unicorns and we need to start being camels. <laughs> you know, because PI has always been what's new, what's exciting, what's next, you know, all, it's constant evolution. Um, whereas, of course, you know, there was a recognition that the coronavirus was going to take us through a period of um, but well, we're just going to get on. We're going to have to get across that flipping desert, you know, fill a hump up with water and start walking. And I have to say, you know, I felt this enormous sense of relief. I literally went, oh, lovely, because I'm a natural camel. I think I told you this, you know, I, and I thought, oh, great. They're going to feed me now camel food, not unicorn food. Um, and I, I think it, it can be that simple because, you know, now suddenly instead of going out there changing the world, we just need to buckle down, keep doing what we do and focus on retention and adding value and looking after our clients and um you know just moving from exploring to producing it's you know on our on our very simple diagram it's a tiny little movement down but it just made so much sense to me in terms of thinking let's not go there we're going here mm. and you can adapt accordingly yeah <laughs> I, did, I remember i told you i'm not one of those scabby two hump camels with all its skin <laughs> hanging off i'm I've said this like a hundred times. I'm an Arabian racing camel that sells for millions of dollars and can run faster than a racehorse. But I am a camel. I've made my peace with it. Fill up your hump with water and get across the desert. It's going to be my. New, it's going to be my new phrase. That's <laughs> right, guys. Come on, just fill your hump up with water and we'll. <laughs> you know, for some client, I mean, for some organisations. Again, you mentioned hospitality. You mentioned, you know. Um, uh, retail, you know, aviation, you know, awful, because that's what you've got to do. But of course, you know, we're, we're very lucky. We work with an immensely diverse client base. Um, and some of our clients are literally moving from camels to unicorns because um, that's now what the business environment is now asking of them because for them, unfortunately, and they, they also, I'm maybe sorry to admit this, but for our business, it's been really good. I, I have a client that makes pet food they've never sold ever so much sold so much dog food because everybody's buying dogs yeah and, uh, and we've got organizations in the pharmaceutical business gaming um whose business of course is literally taken off yeah yeah and that's that's what i mean as i think you know there has to be an appreciation that we're all at different stages of this you know, from whether it is, you know, react, regroup or, or rebuild, we're all at different stages and we're all going to have to go back a little bit before we can go forward and, you know, and, and go back and reset. We th I, I think you're right. And I think this is what we're saying. Well, you know, do it with intent. Yeah. Yeah. We, we talk about it in terms of destination direction roadmap. So we say, you know, have you the to answer the why weren't they just question is, OK, why won't you just have have you have you told them? It's a bit like we use the analogy of a holiday. You can say to people, right, we're uh, in terms of destination strategy, we're off to Australia. And everyone goes, yay, we're off to Australia. And then you go, so have you told them why we're going to Australia and why we chose des that destination and uh, you know where, what we're doing in terms of that? And, uh, and they go, no, we just told them we're going to Australia. Okay, so should we tell them where we're going in Australia and what they're going to be doing while they're there and what we're going to get up to? And then there becomes a choice for the individual to decide whether they are on board and do they need jabs? Do they need a visa? I mean, you know, again, these are things that it wouldn't even cross my mind straight away, but that's immediately where somebody different would go. I don't, yeah, I get that, but how, when, how, when? Exactly, which is your roadmap. You know, I talked to somebody on Friday and I said to them, you know, it's, there's a huge change in, in terms of the organization that we're working with from every single angle you, you know it's 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 a charity organization and it's a huge organizational shift for them and you know we're talking about the australia analogy and i said if you don't if you say to them going to australia and when i get to australia we're going to go to melbourne because we want to I don't, i've never been to australia so i don't know why i use this analogy but we're going to melbourne because we want to do this this, and this while we're here someone might want to go to australia with you but they might not decide you know further down the line they actually don't want to be in melbourne and then there's a you know there's the engagement conversation about how long i'm going to be with the business for mm -hmm. so i think it's really key to be able to get them to understand you know what we're doing as a short term and a longer term and to communicate you know direction destination and roadmap absolutely um, okay, let's get back onto the questions then that have come in. So, um, strategy and alignment, the right communication. 
Um, so if we've if we're in that situation where we're starting to sort of understand our individuals a little bit better, we understand ourselves and therefore we understand the individual, and we're talk now talking about the journey that we are on in terms of the business. Um, what are the things that you this is sort of the the, the tip type sort of situation? So um where do they start? Where would you say, you know, is it is a good place to start? So I get it. I know me. I'm starting to understand them. I think I know which direction this we're going in. So where do we start? Uh, um, we've always said, I mean, team building, you know, facilitating team events have always been quite key to what we do in, in our business. So we've always started by saying that, you know, true team building is around understanding what the jobs are that every member of the team needs to do. So before you start thinking about the people, you know, in my team, what are the jobs? And as you know, Karen, in with the predictive index, we're able to articulate the behavioral demands of the job. So I think start with a blank sheet of paper, what are the jobs? Then what you do is you then look at the people within the context of the job and hopefully you've got a good fit. And I think that's step one. Then what you do is you look at the team together People often say to me, what do I need to do to hire to my team? I had a very heated debate with somebody last week where she said, my team's missing this. And I said, no, 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 no. You don't hire to a team. You hire to the job and then you work with who you have. So I think, you know, again, I would say now, and I've kind of talked about this already is, you know, as a leader, understand yourself, understand what drives and what's important to you. Clearly important as well that you understand where you're trying to take this business of yours, because if you're not clear about where the strategy is, then it's unlikely your team are going to be. So <laughs> who you, what drives you, might vote you, where do you want to take this business? Then it's about understanding the individual members of your team and what drives and motivates them. Then it's about looking at them all together in terms of what collectively, what type of team are they? What do they need together? Um, how do you look at the way that you communicate? You know, so again, if you're gonna continue doing it virtually, you know, how often do you have updates? How often do you have strategic meetings? How often do you have one on one so that it works for everybody? And then, of course, it's about what's the team, the work that the team needs to do here at the top level. What type of strategy are we following and are we best positioned to deliver it? Are there gaps in our team? And if there are behaviorally, then who else do we have that we can bring in? You know, maybe there's people at the next level down that we could involve or we could co-opt or. Um, and I think you know, that's the only way to do it. That's the only way to construct a dream team, I think. Mm. So there is a recognition in there then that there, there, is, there needs to be movement within the teams, isn't there? You know, what we, what we had pre-pandemic in terms of those motivations and behaviours might not be what they're looking at. It is, but again, you know, within the workshops that we run, we also talk about the concept of stretch. So it doesn't mean to say, for example, that if I'm, uh, if I'm following uh, and we present it visually um, in, in, in quadrants. So if I'm somebody who's orientated to follow a, an exploring strategy, which is growth and quick acquisition, I could flex potentially into a producing strategy. I could potentially flex into a cultivating strategy. What I will not be able to flex is into a business as usual process and procedure strategy. So it's also, I think, then about looking at the individuals in the team and saying, where is the stretch? So if we've now identified that strategy has changed and we need to be going there, who's best placed on the team to lead on that strategic shift? Mm. Who can flex them more naturally? Or who can more easily lead on it? And who are the flexes that can support them? Okay, so there's a there is the, the sort of gap analysis piece that we're talking about at the moment. Okay. Um, okay. So if you were talking to clients, customers at the moment, your you know your clients. Um, this is a conversation or a question that we ask. Um, we ask all of the all of the sort of presenters. You talk about leadership, individual strategy, or combination strategy. What what three tips would you give to those people now? 
as something that they can achieve. So you're going to talk about PI in a minute and, and what, you know, potentially what is, you know, what, what we can offer in terms of the listeners to, to, to this, you know, Shed Talk Strict podcast, whichever way you're listening to it. But before we do that, before we talk about PI, what are three things that if PI is not the right sort of tool for them, what three things would you give them to do to take away that they could potentially sort of do tomorrow to potentially get that interaction or where to start? I'm not sure that I could necessarily answer that because, you know. It was a massive question I asked there, wasn't it? A massive flipping question. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I don't even... When I'm in a supermarket queue, I work out which checker I'm going to based on what I think is the profile of the cashier. So it, as far as I'm concerned, everything comes down to behavioral drives. It just so happens I've hung my hat on the predictive index. But I do think, you know, let's take predictive index out of it. I think it's quite simply as a leader, understand yourself, understand what you're there to do and understand your people. And some people will do that intuitively without need for any assessments. but most don't because the reality is we think we know people based on what we see and of course the reality is we see behavior we don't see what lies beneath that so we think we know behavioral drives of an individual and it's often quite a surprise when we measure it in some way and find it's not what we thought it was so if i had to i i would just again reiterate those three things which is kind of what i've been saying throughout this really is you know try and really understand yourself what's the work that you and your team are there to do mm -hmm. and who are the people that you've got working for you and get beneath the surface and don't take it for granted that you know them because you might not yeah 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 and I think yeah the, one of the, the biggest issues is that we think we know you know we think we have a handle on people don't we mm. Um, mm. which sometimes 90% of the time isn't that Absolutely. So, as you know because everybody we did profile Karen's husband Profile my husband. <laughs> we profile quite a lot of people. <laughs> Somebody said to me the other day, do I profile, do I, do I, do I, do, because of the simplicity of PI, for those of you who don't know PI, it's very, very, very simplistic and very short and easy to complete. And, and, uh, and well, you can say more about that than I can. Um, but yeah, you know, it is so quick and so simple that it's just easy to do. Do I profile people who, yeah. Yes, we do. Well, I, I can say, Karen, there's nobody in my life whose profile I don't have. Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> and I was trying to work out the other day whether I could profile the dog. <laughs> yeah. That's how sad I've become. But then profiling the dog is actually whether you look like, because they always say owners look like their dogs, don't they? Which worries me slightly as I have a spaniel and a terrier. What does that tell you? <laughs> do you share what dog you have? And then... <laughs> I'm a bit embarrassed, really. I've got a dashend. <laughs> Uh, it says, it says everything. <laughs> so let's let's close off the, um, the the conversation with sort of just having a quick talk about about PI as a tool. Seeing as though we've both, as you can tell, we're very passionate about PI. Um, but let's finish off by sort of talking a little bit about, about PI then, and, and what you know if people are interested in progressing the PI aspect. So if we have gone through what you've recommended in terms of I look at myself, the things I have to do, and the people that I have to be able to do it. Talk us through sort of PI for those who don't know it and might be interested in, in progressing further. What can they do? Right. Um, I'll try and keep this as brief as I possibly can. But it's a, it's a tool with a long history. It's been around since the 1950s. It's got huge provenance and it works with major international clients globally, as well as small not-for-profit organizations in the individual countries where we're represented. As I said before, simple behavioral assessment um, just measures your response to four key bundles of traits really helps us to understand what uh, you need from an environment in order to be at your productive best. It has far deeper um, applications than that because it can be used in coaching, conflict resolution, team building, of course, uh, performance management, but there's not a people application where you can't use this stuff. Um, we, our clients, we provide as well as this simple behavioral assessment, we also provide a mechanism to profile the behavioral demand of a job, which is where the predictability comes from. Because if we know what the behavioral demand of a job is and the natural behavioral orientation of an individual, we can predict the likelihood of success. We also have a measurement of cognitive intelligence in our basic offer, which helps us to understand how quickly people learn. So we provide data. And then we train our um, uh, analysts to move that data to insight, 
with the hope that in their businesses they will actually translate it, translate it into actions that have a demonstrable effect on the bottom line. Because that's what we are. We're a business tool that's helping, that's here to impact business. And typically we organize or we organize ourselves through a um, um, an annual contract whereby our clients have unrestricted usage to these three assessments that we've just talked about. And of course, we've got the whole raft of new stuff just about to hit the decks, which is um, around this um, team functionality that um, I've been talking about. Okay. All righty. Um, so in terms of sort of accessing um, that sort of information, I mean, we'll, we'll make it available um, again, for those of you who are watching, it will be available via, um, via the website. Um, if you go to uh, www.rowanhr.com forward slash resources, we will make sure that uh, the information is available uh, there for you. Um, and uh, for those of you who are listening, not actually watching us, but are actually listening to us, um, then it will be uh, in the um, in the show notes uh, afterwards as to where you can where you can access that information. Um, and what we will be able to do is um, I, there is um, there is an offer of some of some insights from from PI as a result of this. Do you want to have a do you want to tell us about what those are? Yeah, we're very happy to um, invite anybody that's listening who might be interested in understanding their team to what we call a one-to-one -one talent assessment. It's not going to be charged, so it's there. And we will very happily arrange for you as the leader to complete your own profile um, and to complete the profile of your team, the individuals, and to sit down with you as the team leader to take you through that bit about your own drives and motivations the effect your behavior can have on others. And we can also kind of talk you through the constituent individual members of your team and collectively where your strengths and challenges might be. And we're very happy to do that um, as a special offer. <laughs> a one-off offer, so thank you for listening. I can't promise it's one-off because I might offer it to other people, but you are the first people to be offered it. <laughs> So in terms of in terms of what they will get then is they will have a talent assessment profile for themselves in order yep. to understand themselves, a profile from the team. And, and I'd be very happy to talk that through or, or you, Karen, we can talk about the mechanics of that, but talk that through with them. Yeah. And in terms of the team, what number size teams? So we don't get a team of uh, 100 come in. What are we talking? <laughs> up to 10, maximum of 10, which I still think is very generous because I doubt there are, you know, if you're a manager with more than 10 direct reports, I think we need to have a separate conversation about how effective you are. <laughs> there's, there's a whole conversation. There's a whole new podcast shed talk coming in terms of larger teams. So profile for, for, the, uh, for the manager, profile uh, for up to 10 people. Um, plus the talent assessment of where the team sits in terms of what they're looking for. So what type of team they are, yes, and uh, what their natural collective needs and behaviours are likely to be. Okay. Um, so, yes. So anybody who is listening who would like to take up that offer, um, what we would ask you to do in the first instance is if you can email us at hello at rowanhr.com. Um, we will arrange for the introduction uh, to Michael, who will then sort of take you through that uh, take you through that that process of the of the profiles and how it will work um so yeah further notes further information and to share sort of the information that we've talked about then it will be on our resources page of our website www.rowanhr.com forward slash resources and for those who are interested in picking up more that level of detail and also the the free very generous offer um you can really see how good this tool is uh then you need to email us at hello at rowanhr.com uh, and we'll make sure that michael gets all of those details through so that you can uh you can start to progress that side um just a quick thank you then michael huge thank you from from our thank side you. um yeah thank you very much for for um for joining us um we didn't we didn't quite keep time i don't know why we always do this when you and i talk but we never <laughs> but it's fine it's okay we're not rushing off to do another zoom call um but yeah thank you to michael for joining us um and for sort of sharing some of those insights uh thank you uh to listeners and people who are who are watching this um and listening to us um this has been a shared talk from uh, Rowan Consulting, who are HR and organizational design specialists uh, who work with business owners and leaders 
uh, in order to structure their business for growth and change, uh, to develop their leaders and also manage their uh, people in terms of our HR support services. Uh, if, you have if you have enjoyed the shared talk, uh, then we'd very much like you to sort of share the information um, and uh, we're very happy to send you the link details via our website. Uh, to subscribe to any of our newsletters and to see what's coming up over the next sort of six months uh, in terms of these talks and further sort of resources, then please do uh, subscribe via our website. Um, in uh, a just a one sort of final final thank you um, to uh, to the people behind the scenes who also make these recordings available because if it was left to me and IT skills we probably wouldn't get much further than a conversation so thank you to uh, the team that sort of sit behind us and putting it together. Um, I would just like to say stay well everybody we hope to sort of continue the conversation with you after the event but in the meantime we hope you will stay well uh, and we'll see you soon we will update you on the next updates as soon as they are available. Um, Thank you very much, Michael. We will thank see you. you. Pleasure, um, and uh, yeah, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay.